a community in New York was probably already disestablished uh, probably by the time of the Revolutionary War. And the Longhouse community had communal gardens. According to Clinton and Sullivan's march through uh, Iroquois country when they uh, Washington said to those generals, burn everything, uh, burn the houses of the Iroquois, burn all their fields, destroy all their crops. And they found um, that there were like uh, orchards in New York that were 1,500 trees in one orchard, peach and apple trees. And uh, the soldiers kept diaries of in Sullivan's army and said, we destroyed 1,500 trees today, chopped them down, and whatever they did. And then they destroyed a cornfield that was 700 acres big that was related to the Longhouse, I mean, as Longhouse Village. In the Longhouse, the women tended the gardens and planted the seed, and the men cleared the fields and they took down the trees and cleared a, a big field and uh, and they did that work, the heavy duty work there and then the women and children um, uh, used hoes and they tilled and they planted the fields of corn beans and squash and other things, they had other vegetables too. Well, the roles changed so now that when by the time they came to Wisconsin, the men were expected to be farmers, to do the tilling and, and do all of that. And the women were expected to rear the children and take care of the house and do all, you know, all of that stuff. It wasn't like it was in the longhouse, the tipped upside down. Uh, and that had something to do with the churches as well because the churches say, you know, that the man is the head of the house and then that the women will do this. And, it, and that's taught in the churches. And they also, when they came here, they adapted from the people who lived here uh, oxen and that, that the Oneidas all either got one or two oxen and they could uh, do their lumbering with these animals and they could do uh, their tilling with these animals, uh, but they could also be used as food uh, as well. So there were a lot of oxen in this community when they first came and then they changed gradually from oxen to horses. And then they did have milk cows, one or two or, or how, how many they want. Sometimes they did get fairly large herds so that they could uh, send milk off to a creamery or something. Uh, but that's the way it was from longhouse to log homes that were built here. And I think it was a very traumatic lifestyle change, very traumatic. But it took, you know, uh, a, a while, like maybe 50 to 75 years to get from the longhouse to nuclear family raising your own stuff. And the boarding schools also taught that in late 1800s, where it said that you should be an individual land owner and not do this community stuff because that wasn't, uh, that, that wasn't supposed to be the way it was. And, and so a lot of the students, and we had 500 that went to Carlisle in Pennsylvania, came back and said, you gotta have these individual farms and we gotta do our own thing. And we've got to be selfish and, and earn as much money as we can for our own self, our own family. Never mind this community stuff. Nevertheless, the Oneidas still went ahead with a lot of community functions, like building the church, that it was a community function. Some of the thrashing, the haying, and stuff like that, they did uh, in community groups. And our farm was a primitive farm at the time. We milked cows by hand. We did not have electricity, so we had to pump water for the cattle and the horses. We had a huge garden, probably well over an acre 
and we grew all of our own potatoes and onions, the root crops, um, beets, carrots. Uh, we grew cabbage. We raised uh, strawberries and raspberries. Our farm started out to be 57 acres as a dairy farm, and we raised all our own dairy feed as well as all of our own food for, for the home. And then Dad expanded, and so eventually the farm became over 200 acres. But by that time, we had electricity, and Dad bought some tractors and um, other modern things like the cows now got water by, by pushing on uh, uh, a lever in the watering cup in the barn. Whereas when I was there, I had to water the cows in the tub and haul the water in pails and pump the water in the pump shed. We used the manure from the chicken coop and the manure from the cows and the horses and it was all replenished back into the soil. Occasionally we had to put uh, like lime in the soil to, uh, to counteract the acidity. Uh, but that's all. We did not have any commercial fertilizer at that time at all. There were springs all over this reservation and there were several springs on our farm where uh, you could not plow through them, you had to plow around them because there were water coming out of the ground at that area. So we had a uh, spring in every field uh, for fresh water coming out of the ground. But we didn't have to use the water because we had a deep well now, but we had a pump. We had, it was the hand pump was on it. We had 200 chickens. Chicken will lay an egg almost every day. You can, out of leghorn chickens, you can uh, get 300 eggs per year. And that's, those are the, usually the kind of chickens we had. But we'd buy meat chickens too. We did have a lot of extra eggs. So we would uh, collect them, clean them, put them in a 12 dozen crate and take them to Schrader's Market and trade for groceries. We had a lot of people that would stop in for fresh eggs from our farm. We uh, didn't sell any of the raw milk. We used the raw milk in, at home and we used fresh milk and unpasteurized milk sours in about a day or two and we use a sour milk to bake with, often ate it, um, especially the cream. And our milk was shipped to the cheese factory. And then from the cheese factory, we would put in an order from the milkman who picked up our milk uh, in the milk cans. Uh, my mother would leave a slip out there for five pounds of cheddar cheese or, and two pounds of butter and my mother cleaned and sterilized the wash machine and she poured all the cream in there and she made like 25 and 30 and 40 pounds of butter at one time. But we also had pigs, but they were huge animals. My, my father raised them to be 600 pounds each. We fed any of the surplus buttermilk to the pigs. They got good grain that was, we raised ourselves. It was a mixture of ground feed uh, of oats and corn. And uh, they also got whatever leavings there were from the table, if there were peelings or from canning things, all of, all of that. So we raised our own, our own pork as well as our own beef, as well as our own chickens. I helped my dad with the killing and the processing of the pork. And uh, we didn't sell any. Uh, we processed it for ourselves. And then we rendered all of the lard from the animal. And everybody used lard then. It's nowadays the doctors will advise us not to use lard for health reasons. But then 
We fried everything in lard. We made donuts with lard. We used it in all of our baking and all of our frying for the table. And um, somehow things seemed to balance out because all of us did very hard work. And so if we ate those types of meals, then we also used it up by doing the hard work. So I had firsthand uh, knowledge of everything you do on a farm. My mother canned um, the produce from the garden and probably about five, four or 500 quarts every summer. And they were uh, a lot of, uh, well, all the vegetables. We, we all like beets, uh, but the root vegetables were not canned as much as they were stored in the root cellar uh, with sand. So the potatoes, carrots, beets, rutabagas, turnips, all of those kinds of things were stored in, in a sand, in a bin in the sand. And so they kept all winter. They didn't freeze, they kept fresh. We would have um, uh, like a, a shredded carrot salad in December and January with no problem at all. All farm families were like that. They never went hungry because they could utilize every Thing that they had in their cellar to make something very palatable, very tasty, and very nourishing. Another thing everybody did was visited after hours, and we thought that was the best thing to listen to uh, uh, them talking about, you know, all the things, what kind of grain are you going to raise this year and this and that. It was a big, big, big discussion and we had coffee and cake and all that stuff that goes on with visiting. So there was a lot of exchange there. Mm -hmm.